bring this event up of the last few months. And uh, we are also delighted that one of our contributors, author Sandra Lee, that Mike just told you about, is also here to discuss her essay in the book, Heaven's Playground, and other work that she's doing. <clears throat> this evening, we want to share with you the journey that led to this book. So many things have to happen to make this a reality. We don't know of any other books celebrating a cemetery. <coughs> Cemeteries don't generally inspire celebration. But Mount Auburn Cemetery isn't just any cemetery. Can you hear all right, or is it a reverberation? Okay, thank you. Stephen Pullio, author of Dark Tide, about the famous molasses flood in Boston, and other best-selling books, said of our book, on rare and wonderful occasions, a book comes along that captures the full essence of a place, the splendor of its natural beauty, the exquisiteness of its mystery, the depth of its character. Dead in good company is such a work. Scott Viedensall, author of Living in the Wind, of a Feather and Other Books, and also a Pulitzer Prize finalist, wrote, Dead in Good Company shows how a place of death is, in every important way, a place of vivid, vibrant life. Joseph Finder, a Boston best-selling author, of, uh, who's had a couple of his books made into films, writes of Dead in Good Company, a lively, fascinating collection of essays and stunning photographs that reveal the vibrancy and extraordinary beauty of the oldest landscaped cemetery in the nation. And Holly Carr, columnist, talk show host, and best-selling author said of this book, Dead in Good Company is a treasure and a triumph. And this book is all of these things, and that's because Mount Auburn Cemetery is a treasure, and because of the high level of participants in the book, that share their keen insights of this unique place. Now maybe 40 years ago, or maybe even more than that, a group of artist friends in Paris might have been sitting in a cafe, and one of them might have remarked, you know, I think Les Miserables has great musical possibilities. A simple comment like that perhaps led to the iconic musical that has captured the hearts of millions of people all over the world. Often, a passing remark can have a profound effect. Indeed, a passing remark can change your life. I learned that in the quest to make this book a reality. I went to visit one of my author friends, Pierce Butler, a professor at Benton University, in the year 2000 to sign some of his new book, A Riddle of Stars, for my accounts. As a book distributor, my author friends signed their books and I put a sticker on it, autographed copy, and put them in my accounts, like Mass General Gift Shop, Brigham and Women's, the Leahy Clinic, uh, Newton Wellesley Hospital, places like that. And um, when I got to, to Pierce's house for him to sign books, he said, oh God, John, I thought I was gonna miss you. I just returned from Mount Auburn Cemetery bird watching. Do you do that, he asked. I told him that I didn't, and though I'd heard about Mount Auburn Cemetery now and then through the years, I always thought a cemetery is a cemetery, so I never visited. Pierce assured me that Mount Auburn was not like other cemeteries, and he said that he thought I would enjoy bird watching too. The following Sunday, I decided to go to this Mount Auburn Cemetery. I picked up a map of the cemetery when I drove in and decided to go to Willow Pond. I've always found weeping willows to be particularly beautiful. Willow Pond was breathtaking. I walked around the pond and photographed a bird in a weeping willow tree with my old Nikon rangefinder camera, one of those film cameras. Do you remember film? Remember that? <laughs> I'm glad I don't remember it too well. I walked around uh, the, the Willow Pond and um, took a photograph of a bird in a tree. As I discovered later, it was a Baltimore Oriole. I was such a novice that I didn't even know that that was a Baltimore Oriole. I still have that photograph of the Oriole on my wall. It reminds me of that first morning. That was the beginning of my love for Mount Auburn Cemetery and the beginning of my fascination with birds and other wildlife and the beginning of the unlikely journey that brings Kim and me here tonight. 
I had always enjoyed photography, but birds and other wildlife in Mount Auburn, for the first time, gave my photography direction. So my author friend, Pierce Butler, turned out to be correct. I do love Mount Auburn Cemetery, and I'm an avid bird watcher photographer, just from a passing remark. I spent more and more time at Mount Auburn and met like-minded people and learned more and more about birds and foxes and eventually the coyotes that lived in the cemetery. Really, getting to know Mount Auburn and the wildlife is a long process. Remember, my first time at Mount Auburn was in the year 2000. After a decade of going there in 2010, I had the idea to maybe put together a book of photographs of the wildlife of the cemetery. Being in the book business, it's natural to think that maybe there was a book in you. After all, I spent a great deal of time with authors. I enjoyed being a small part of that universe. I still do. I just never expected to be on this side of it. I asked a friend in New York who was a nonfiction literary agent, Linda Corner, about doing a book of photographs of the cemetery. And she said that books of photographs are tough to sell to a publisher, and that I should try to come up with something else, another idea to go along with that. A short time later, I was driving past Bigelow Chapel at the cemetery, and if you've been there, any of you, you know where Bigelow Chapel is. And as I was driving past, I actually slapped myself on the head. I'm a book distributor, I thought. I know all of these authors, and they know and love Mount Auburn as I do. Why not a book of essays about the cemetery by these authors, along with photographs of some of the photographers that regularly explore the cemetery in search of the birds and other wildlife? On that day in 2010, 10 years after my first visit, the idea for this book was born. However, I realized immediately that if the idea had merit, I would have to speak to the president of the cemetery, David Barnett, who I had come to know along the way from being there day after day after day. And I made an appointment and uh, talked with him and told him of my idea. And um, he said that there have been many books written about Mount Auburn, but they were all academic in nature, about the horticulture, about the history, the architecture. He said this would be the first book that would be for the people, for their own personal, not professional reasons. And then he leaned over and said, and all the other books are in boxes in our basement. <laughs> so he liked, he liked the idea of a book for just the regular people to come in here because they love the place, they love the wildlife, they love walking around. There are many things that bring the average person to Mount Auburn Cemetery. And he felt that this book would be something that they would like. So his enthusiasm galvanized me and the quest had began. I immediately started talking to my author friends about the project. They all loved the idea. I would even meet some of my authors at the cemetery now and then to sign their books for me because it was convenient for us, but they loved meeting there because it's a nice place to be. I began, began collecting essays from them and poems from a few poet friends and photographs from some of my photographer friends and in 2011, I met Kim Nagy, a photographer at the cemetery, and we became friends. I soon told her about the book project and asked her if she would like to join the endeavor with me. As we used to say in the Navy, Kim has can-do spirit. And I knew that she would be a good fit for this project, and she has been, and I don't think I, I couldn't have done it without her. So uh, that was serendipity. Now once we, we decided we were gonna do it, those two dreaded words occurred to us. What now? We were collecting essays and poems from the authors. Among the authors contributing to the book are Alan Dershowitz, Mayor Ray Flynn, broadcaster and one-time general manager of the Boston Patriots, way back, Upton Bell, Boston author and TV icon Hank Philip E. Ryan, Pulitzer Prize winner Megan Marshall, sports writer and broadcaster Dan Shaughnessy, and historical novelist William Martin. The internationally known Concord author and artist David Sibley graciously gave us his illustration of a Blackburnian warbler. Concord mystery true crime author Kate Flora has an essay in our book. Oddly enough, Kate's essay is entitled Dead in Good Company. <laughs> Kim will explain how the title of Kate's essay became the title of our book.